And welcome to the Primary Storyline, a video series about post-production as it relates to Final Cut Pro 10 motion and compressor. My name is Andrew Gormley, and I will be your host. In this episode, we'll once again be venturing out into the vast wilderness of non-Apple software, but sticking with a company whose reputation in the field of video is very highly regarded. I'm talking, of course, about Blackmagic Design's very own DaVinci Resolve. Just a few years ago, DaVinci Resolve was the de facto standalone color correction platform, but it has since evolved into a very capable piece of video editing software. The kicker is that the base version of it is completely free, as in beer, and very likely more than most folks will ever need when it comes to video editing. Depending on the project, I sometimes reach for Resolve first. If, for instance, I know that the project will be shot in Cinema DNG RAW from start to finish, and I don't want a round trip between editors, Resolve is really the best bet. The same is true if a project is shot entirely in log, and during the edit I want my timeline color space to reflect what the footage actually looks like without having to apply a grade or LUT. Further, all of the timeline and editing tools are very familiar and work perfectly. Of course, it doesn't use the magnetic timeline that Final Cut has, and it's very much traditional in the sense of track-based editing. However, because it reads and generates Final Cut Pro 10's version of XML, it's extremely easy to translate one to the other. So in front of us, we have a promo video that I'm currently working on. And let's say that I'm at the point right now where I have my edit locked and I'm ready to grade this or hand it over to the colorist working on the project. Getting this over to Resolve is a trifle. With the project selected in the media browser up here, we wanna to go to the file menu and choose export XML. I want to note that as of this recording, I haven't had much luck with the 1.6 version of Final Cut Pro's XML. It exports just fine and opens in DaVinci Resolve great, but the round trip back to Final Cut fails at least half the time, which leads me to believe it's probably a DaVinci issue. That said, there's nothing at all wrong with using 1.5 for the purposes of this demo, and it's very likely that a future update to Resolve will fix this issue. So down the bottom, for XML version, just make sure that previous version 1.5 is selected. I have an XML outputs folder where I save all of my work from Final Cut. The name looks good, so I'll just save it. The next step is obviously to open DaVinci Resolve, so let's do that. Here I'm just going to click on admin because that's the user that I use. And what you see here next is the project manager. I have a few things I've worked on already in here, but what we're going to do is just double click on untitled project. And this brings us to the media pane of Resolve. From here, we're going to go to the file menu and choose import AAF EDL XML. Make sure that you're in the XML outputs folder or wherever you had saved your XML and choose the one that we just exported and press open. On this load XML window that appears, we'll have the opportunity to rename the timeline, adjust time code, and a lot of other options, but these defaults look good to me, so I'm just going to press okay. At this point, Resolve imports our clips into the media pool and then displays our timeline. So if you're like me, you're probably feeling right at home with the layout of this application, and that is very intentional. You could trim up your project here in the timeline, and let's go ahead and do that. So I know that these two clips need a little bit of work, so let's give them a listen. Found it in a constructive way, um, which is. So right there. Found it in a constructive way. I'm going to use the blade tool, and cut that. I, th I think what it comes down to is. And I want to remove that first. I think. I, th I think. Right here. play it back conversation around it in a constructive way i think what it comes down to is are you willing to perfect because we're referencing the original media you could even lengthen clips just like you would in final cut by grabbing the edge like this and then just dragging it out and you could see how much of a clip you have as illustrated by the white outline surrounding the clip As if that weren't cool enough, Resolve recognizes that these interview clips are multicam clips. If you double click on one, you can see the other angle. For this tutorial though, I just want to apply a quick color grade and kick this back over to Final Cut, but there's a lot we'll be exploring here soon. So for now, let's just click on the color tab down here. 
This window will look slightly different depending on your screen size and resolution, but in general, you should have your gallery in the upper left, viewer in the middle, nodes on the right. Moving down a little bit, we have our clips cutting across the middle and beneath that, a mini timeline. And then on the bottom left, we have either color wheels or bars, curves, and then either keyframes or scopes. So again, a lot of this can change depending on your screen resolution and any preferences you had set up, but this is the basic gist of the color pane. So what I'm gonna do is select this first clip and I'm going to move a little bit forward because I don't want the fade in. I actually want to see what this clip looks like. And then on the node, I'm gonna grab the first one and I'm just going to apply a very quick LUT to this to get it close. That looks okay. And now I'm going to press Option S to add a serial node and I will make some quick adjustments here. So, do that. Bring that up a little bit, bring the mids up. Because we have increased the contrast, we've also increased saturation, so I'm gonna bring that back down a little bit. And I will also increase the mid-tone detail. And now if I press function option D, we could see a preview where it disables all the nodes, so we get a before and after of what this looks like. And I like where we are. So what I'm gonna do next is move to this clip and I'm gonna press the equal sign to apply the grade from the previous clip. As you can see, this doesn't look great yet, um, but it's a good starting point and it has brought both of the original nodes over, including the LUT, which is the same for both. So here, I'll reset this and let's just bring this up overall and then I will bring the lift down a bit. That looks pretty good. Midtone detail, 30. Um, do a color boost of 10, a little work on the curve here. Maybe like that, let's give it a look. It's before and after. I think that looks pretty good for a very quick grade right here. So what I'm gonna do here is right click and grab a still to save uh, this angle. Again, I'm gonna press equals to apply that same grade to this clip. And let's reset both of these. Again, I'm gonna bring this way up. Uh, it doesn't look great so far, but we're getting there. Thirty, ten. Let's give it a preview. I like the way that looks, at least for now. So again, I'm gonna right click and grab a still for this one. So now I have stills which are grades for these two angles. So I'm just gonna select every angle that falls on this side and then apply this grade. And then the same for this one, this one, and this clip across the board and I will apply this grade. So now we have a fully graded project here in Resolve. Again, it's not perfect because there are variations in skin tones that I didn't take into account, but overall, let's say I'm happy with this grade and we are ready to get it back over into Final Cut for finishing. The first thing you wanna do is click on Deliver down here, and you'll be brought to the Deliver pane. From here in the upper left, we want to select Final Cut Pro, and then on the arrow to the right, drop that down and choose 10, because we're going to Final Cut Pro 10. Next, we wanna save the location where we will be rendering out these files. So I'm going to Browse, and I have a folder here on an external drive for DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to create a new folder called Eleconf. Press OK and then I will select that and press OK. Below that we have options for exporting our video, audio, and file names, but I pretty much like the way all this looks. So given all this, I'm going to press Add to Render Queue, and then over here, I will press Start Render. And once again, through the magic of editing, as we've done for the past few videos, we will just skip through this entire process. But it doesn't take very long, it should only be about a little over two minutes. And magically, we are back. So that didn't actually take too long at all. If you look right up here, you could see that the job was completed in two minutes and 30 seconds. So it's a relatively fast render process, especially considering that these are 4K clips that we're rendering out. Now all we wanna do is swing back over into Final Cut Pro. And in the file menu, we want to go to Import, XML. And in the DaVinci Outputs folder, we want to import the XML in the clip in the folder we created. 
So we navigate here, Eleconf, and choose this FCP XML file right here. Final Cut will create a new event of the same name followed by resolve in parentheses. And inside of that will be a project of the same name. If we double click on the project, we can see that all of our color corrections have indeed been applied. At this point, you can further refine your edit by adding titles, lower thirds, and making audio edits. And then once you're totally finished, you can export it just like you normally would right here from the share menu. I want to note that this export from DaVinci back to Final Cut locks the clips to whatever length they were and removes the ability to change your multicam angles. So you'll see we can't grab this clip and drag it anymore. We are at the end of this clip right now. This is ultimately a good thing since you're generating brand new ProRes files and wouldn't want a whole new project's worth of video files to deal with. But if you need to make content changes, you'll either have to edit your original project or if you're comfortable, make the changes in DaVinci like I briefly showed you earlier. Thank you for watching again. If you found it useful, please give it a good rating on iTunes or subscribe on YouTube as it will help others find and join this amazing band of video editing people that we have here. I don't know. Or don't do any of that and really, honestly, please enjoy just the free knowledge and make epic stuff. If you have any questions or have an idea for something you'd like to see covered, you can reach out via the website at theprimarystoryline.com or email theprimarystoryline at gmail.com. For those of you asking, you can find me on Twitter at Dark Driving. My name is Andrew Gormley. Thank you all for watching. I will see you all in the next episode of The Primary Storyline.